Can I go now? The Naked Vicar Show, starring Ross Higgins, Kev Goldsby, and Nolene Brown, with Colin McEwen and Julie McGregor. wrong with this sentence. The Premier of Queensland are often seen walking on water. <laughs> yes, it's obvious, isn't it? That sentence should read... The Premier of Queensland are often seen walking on thin ice. <laughs> and now a police report. At 2 a.m. in the morning last night, between the hours of 1 and 3, the following persons were charged with frequenting an illegal gaming house. My hour is full out. Mr. J. Smith of Darwin, Mr. J. Smith of Mount Isa, Mr. J. Smith of Bracken Hill, and Mr. J. Smith of Adelaide. Mrs. B. Brown of Melbourne, Hobart, Stanford, Brisbane, and Woomera. A Miss Shirley Temple of Fitzroy. Mr. D. Duck of Ayers Rock. Mr. Attila the Hun of Randwick. Mr. No Mess Charlie of Wollongabba. And Mr. I. R. Men. <laughs> of Yarra Lumla, ACT. <laughs> Would any members of the public knowing the whereabouts of the aforementioned suspects, please ask him to return Sergeant Halfpenny's patrol car. <laughs> also Sergeant Halfpenny. <laughs> On his recent visit to Rome, the Prime Minister presented what he described as a uniquely Australian gift to His Holiness the Pope. The gift was devised by Mr. Al Grasby to symbolise the close cultural ties between Australia and Italy. It was a two-tone purple 68 Valiant Pacer. <laughs> With three mag wheels and Venetian blinds. <laughs> Inside the car, Mr. Grasby had supplied four fringed black velvet cushions bearing sequined scenes of Moomba and the Harbour Bridge by night. A kangaroo paw cigarette lighter. And a fluffy pink steering wheel cover. And on the back window, a sticker that read, Don't laugh, mister, it could be your daughter inside. <laughs> the Pope was delighted with the gift, but said there was a bit of a rumble in the diff and asked why the skeleton's eyes didn't light up when he stood on the brakes. <laughs> Mr. Fraser said, no worries, Pope, as he presented the vinyl wallet containing the Rego papers and a warranty from the dealer, Johnny Gorton's Grass Goers. <laughs> Following his immense success with Superstar, Harry M. Miller is busy organising the event of the century, the Queen's Jubilee celebrations. It's all going well. He said today. It's just getting her up on the cross that's the problem. <laughs> We interrupt this show for an official government bulletin. In light with the government's cursed cotting campaign, from today, all Prebrilebes will be typed to be Mrs. Fraber. <laughs> Signed, Tabby. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Adelaide, police have arrested a man who broke the world record for going without sleep. The man stayed awake for seven weeks, three days, and two hours. He was charged with resisting arrest. <laughs> Wash your hands, Jeffrey. Bite your bum, Gloria. <laughs> and in, in keeping with the new broadcasting tribunal's plan for self regulation of commercial television stations, this has been invented. Bleep! The Gingel Bleep. And it's used to clean up dirty songs like this. I could have bleep! all night I could have bleeped all night and still have bleeped some more here's another filthy little ditty Mr. Gingell helped us clean up bleep 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 Delilah <laughs> I saw her bleep. on the night when I passed by her window 
I saw the flickering shadow of Bleep. on her blind. Bleep. She stood there, Bleeping. Then I took my Bleep. in my hand, and she Bleep. no more. <laughs> Hot. Oh, thanks, Mom. Morning, Dad. No. Here we are. What's that? It's a chop, dear. Oh, not this morning, thanks, Mom. Eat the chop, boy. <laughs> I don't want it, Dad. He doesn't want it, do you? Keep out of this, Phil. Oh, Dad. Do we have to go through all During of this? During the Depression years, boy, I saw men strangle their wives for a chop. <laughs> So eat it. I've had quite enough of your devil may care chop attitude. Now, Ted. Keep out of this, Thel. Oh, he's off again, Mum. Bloody right, I'm off again, Craig. What about the Kokoda Trail out there in the backyard? Oh, Dad. You know where the mower is. Well, I'm going water skiing. Not with my mower, you're not, boy. <laughs> when I was your age, I thought myself lucky if I had to mow the lawn. It was either that or lick the carpet clean. <laughs> Look, my father, your grandfather, my father, you know, the old bloke we buried last week. Yeah, yeah him. I don't want to hear another word against the old bastard. Now, Ted. Keep out of this, Phil. He was so unemployed, the only way he could make a quid was by training funnel webs to jump over his nose. Come on. Don't well, upset your father, dear. Keep out of this, Phil. <laughs> when I was a boy, boy, I used to walk 20 miles to school carrying a horse. <laughs> Dad, we're going water skiing, and then we're going to have a barbecue down on the banks of the river and, and, and everything. Barbecue? In my day, they were called bushfires. <laughs> Me and your Uncle Alan, you can put out the hull of the Blue Mountains with a wet sock dipped in golden syrup. <laughs> it's all Get out arranged. there and mow the lawn. Go on. It's all arranged, Dad. We're going to have a barbecue and then stay out overnight and, and come back in the morning, and I'll need to take the car. To Kingswood? Yeah, not taking the Kingswood. <laughs> Dad. Just put new Venetians in it. Dad. <laughs> take your mother's car. Well, I can't take Marilyn out in Mum's car. Oh, isn't it good enough for your snotty little girlfriend? It's good enough for your snotty little mother. <laughs> you never hear her complaining, do you? Well, as a matter of fact, Ted... Keep out of this, Phil. You can borrow Craig's Morven star. Thanks, dear. He's not, he's not going anywhere anyway. He's going out there to mow the lawn. I'm not mowing any lawn. Listen, Puff. No, Puff. <laughs> Whatever your name is. Oh, don't argue, boys. I just can't stand you it. You always do it, don't you? You always force me. Listen, you long-haired little sex maniac. When I was a boy... Shut up, you vulgar old pig. What did you call me? You jumped up, little... You see what you've done? Your mother's mowing the lawn. <laughs> yeah, it worked again, didn't it, Dad? <laughs> Wayne here again. How's the old fridge? A bit worn out on its last legs, totally clapped. Throw it away. Your problems are over when you come on out to Fridge City Discounts. Yes, Fridge City, the world's biggest new and used fridge yard. And the prices, low, low prices, just like Granny used to be. And this week's super bulk buying baganza from Fridge City. 18 acres of gleaming new Taiwanese fridges that must be cleared this weekend. <laughs> what would you expect to pay for this little beauty? $500? No! $10! Yes, $10! And with every purchase, you get a pair of tartan socks! <laughs> Dentures for the kiddies! <laughs> and a free Taiwanese! <laughs> so don't take my word for it. Meet one of the millions of satisfied customers of Fridge City. Yes, workers, it's the Pope. <laughs> G'day, Pope. How's the fridge going? She's, she's a beauty. <laughs> and the tartan socks? Very warm. <laughs> and the Taiwanese? Cold. <laughs> so don't take my word for it. Take his. And if you can't trust him, who can you trust? Fridge City, come on out. <laughs> Up. Oh, good day, Narelle. How are you? Oh, good day, Lois. Gee, it's nice to have you back. Nice to be back. What was it this time? 
Me tubes again. <laughs> Bloody tubes. Yeah. Got a mind of their own, tubes. <laughs> anyway, what happened while I was away? Oh, the social club threw a really terrific function last week. <laughs> really? Yeah. A tea and Maria and chop tasting party. <laughs> Again? Yeah. Of course, this one was better. Joan found the chops. <laughs> Where? Oh, they've fallen down the back of the cafe bar. <laughs> Just shows you how long it's been since they cleaned it. Yeah. Anyway, who was there? Oh, all the girls. There was Joylene, Gailene, Raylene, Carlene, Nolene, Pauline, Maureen, Noreen, Aileen, Eileen, Lurleen, Maylene, Marlene, Doreen and Kay. <laughs> Is that all? Pam had the mumps. <laughs> bloody mumps. Yeah, bloody mumps. Got a mind of their own, mumps. <laughs> BBC Television, in association with the Australian Broadcasting Commission and Time Life International, is proud to present... Sir Lawrence Olivier in The Search for the Nile. Malcolm. Mm. Yellow peril is on the rampage, Malcolm. Pardon, dear? Yellow peril. Tooth decay. Wouldn't want your choppers falling out in the middle of TDT, would you? Tell me. I Yellow... think you should pass an act or commit a law or something, making everybody clean their teeth every 15 minutes, like I do. Tell me, the Minister for Health is responsible for saving teeth. Oh, I know. He's got thousands of them. <laughs> Strange chappy, funny eyes. <laughs> Tammy! Oh, I'm sorry, dear, but really, Malcolm, you and all your silly papers. One cannot govern a nation efficiently without lots of papers, Tammy. Oh, is that why we keep sending cases of scotch to Rupert Murdoch? <laughs> <laughs> and balls to Kerry Packer? Go to sleep, Tammy. No, I'm not sleepy. Well, here, have a book. No, I'm not hungry either. <laughs> no, that looks interesting. Tammy, Tammy, these are important documents. Look what you've done. That's the Fox report. Oh, yes, dreadful menace. <laughs> Tammy. First it's dingoes, now it's foxes. <laughs> Tammy, the Fox report is about uranium mining. I don't care how clever they are, they're still a dreadful menace. <laughs> Tammy, go to sleep. All right. But only if you do gop for me first. <laughs> Not now, Tammy. I'm too busy. Oh, go on, Malcolm. You're so clever at it. Go on, do gop for little Tammy Webby. <laughs> very well. Just once. <clears throat> Are you ready? That wasn't very good. <laughs> I haven't done it yet. <clears throat> I say, Margaret. My hat has just fallen off. It's just not on. Oh, you're so clever, Malcolm. I must admit my new routine had cabinet in stitches this afternoon. <laughs> Would you like to hear it? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> I say, I say, I say. I haven't finished it yet. You're supposed to say yes. Yes, dear. I say, I say, I say. Yes, dear. 
<laughs> Why did the chicken cross the floor in Parliament? Yes, dear. <laughs> to vote for the other side. <laughs> Go to sleep, Tammy. All right, dear. Good night, dear. <laughs> Malcolm. What? Why do they have chickens in Parliament? <laughs> what? I told you to cross the floor. Oh, good night, dear. Malcolm. What? What do you get if you cross the floor of Parliament with a chook? What? A chicken in labour. <laughs> From Kay Hertz, the superstar rent -a car comes something you're going to need one of these days. Instant trucks. Yep. If you're out of luck and you need a... a truck. Truck. Call the superstars. <laughs> Kay Hertz. The trucks in an instant. <laughs> Oh, come on. No, stop it. Why not? Because I don't want to. Oh, come on. No. Go on. I don't want to, Michael. Well, would it make any difference if I tell you I love you, Faye? No. Why not? My name's Sally. Who's <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, 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 you didn't let me finish. I was about to say, uh, I love you, Faye has thrown us together. Do you really mean that? Of course I mean it. I... I love you. Fate has thrown us together, Sandy. Sally. Uh, Sandy! Living so close to the bus. <laughs> what? Sandy living next to the to the bus stop. Huh? What? Uh, look, I I know that we haven't. I know that we haven't known each other very long, but I I think that you can really get to know a person in 50 minutes and. <laughs> well, I, I think that you and I. Us, we, well, we could be it. It? Something lasting. I mean, in the short time since we left the laundromat, I've come to have a, a, a deep respect for you. I think that you are a truly beautiful person. Do you, you really serious? Of course. Oh, Michael. <sighs> Let's go to bed, Joan, Sally. Joan, this flat. Joan? No. It's very nice. Uh, look, Sally, I... What's wrong? Nothing, I... What, what is it? Nothing, it's just something I collected in Vietnam. <laughs> what? A mortar bomb. It's, <laughs> it's nothing. Look, let's just have a cigarette. Oh, Michael, you're in pain. Uh, look, I think I'd just better go home. I... I just need to lie down for a bit and then I'll be okay. But you can't go home like that. Yeah, I suppose you're right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I didn't realise. Oh, well, you weren't to know. What happened in Vietnam? I'd rather not talk about it. Okay. It was just out of Saigon. <laughs> I'd just been ambushed and I was doing the body count. Funny how you remember things. I just got to 300 and... Oh! I... Sorry. Lower. <laughs> it's all a bit of a blur now, but... I remember this bus loaded with nuns and orphans. Lots of little orphans. And... You know, homeless kids with no parents. The waifs of war. Suddenly, this mortar bomb drops. <gasps> oh, careful! Sorry. Well, I didn't think about it. I, I just threw myself on it. <laughs> there was a roar, and suddenly, nothing. Black. But I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Of course, there are a lot of words bandied about afterwards. What words? Oh, nothing much. Hero. <laughs> Supreme sacrifice. 
Victoria Cross and Bar. Favela, that sort of thing. But I'd rather not talk about it. Okay. Well, I think I'd just better go up. Oh! I'd better go home and lie down. Are you sure you're all right? Well, here goes. Oh! oh. <laughs> Why did you turn off the lights? I didn't. Oh, God, it's happening. Michael. Blind. <laughs> just like they said it would. Who's that? Me. Um, let me take you to bed and make love to you. Do you think that'd help? Well, you could give it a try. <laughs> uh, nurse, would you come in and assist with this um, patient, please? Certainly. Thank you. Well, Mr. Jones, seems you have 85 cavities, which of course accounts for the echo you've been complaining about. <laughs> Lie back in the... Oh, no, don't struggle. Lie back in the... Oh! Thank you. Oh! 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 oh, oh. Don't struggle, Mr. Jones. Don't no, take it, Mr. Jones. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, Mr. Jones, rinse. <laughs> now, Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Oh, whoa, whoa. I said don't struggle. <laughs> 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 I don't suppose anybody here is uh, AB negative. <laughs> don't struggle. I think I'm a bit late for the evening paper. I think I'll just get up. Where you going? Going. Oh, oh, oh. All gone. Thank God. Darling. My place or yours. What's wrong with the waiting room? <laughs> Sharp. Yeah? What do you want? The call of the wild. <laughs> Aye? The untamed shriek of freedom. The throaty roar of the primal scream. The tortured cry of the caged beast. This is what I crave. Drop a ferret down your trousers. <laughs> no, I want to get it off on a yammy. <laughs> All right, drop a yabby down your trousers. Mock me not, Mrs. Jackson, for I am Bruce the Wild One. I? <laughs> you don't understand. I want a motorcycle. With or without a crossbar. <laughs> no, no, the real thing. A two-wheeled ticket to freedom. An escape machine, a steel stallion. But which high-spirited Brumby of the concrete jungle will suit me best? A Triumph Bonneville or a Norton Commando with dual discs? A Cyclops scooter with training wheels. <laughs> I can see me now, defiant yet noble, burning down the blacktop, the wind in my hair. Disdainfully, I laugh at death. Ha ha, death! <laughs> 750 horsepower throbbing between my zip-up flying boots. <laughs> and behind me, my woman. Brutally, I gun the throttle as she cries, Ride, leather boy, ride! <laughs> Who's she? Your bikey mole? No, my mum. <laughs> Does it good to get out of the house. Have you got a licence? You don't need a licence for a mum, do you? <laughs> for the bike, Bruce. Oh, no. Oh, but I've got my discharge papers from the school crossing patrol, see? It says dishonourable discharge. <laughs> yes. I was persecuted. They ripped the peak from my cap, put my sash through the paper shredder, just because I lost my flag. What happened? Well, it was my first day. 
proudly, and with twenty toddlers' eyes upon my noble back, I strode to the centre of the crossing and raised my crossing patrol boots and my flag, and in a high bell-like voice cried, Stop, firemen! You tried to stop the fire brigade. In the southern aurora. <laughs> what happened? Well, I got a nasty bruise on my ribs and a free trip to Albury. <laughs> You're having a lend of me? No, dinks. To this day, I bear the shame on my heart. Really? Yes, I've got VR stamped into my chest. <laughs> Bruce, what do you want? Oh, yes. Um, uh, two motorcycles. I want um, a mauve one and a red one. Got any money? Of course I've got money. My mum gave me some, see? Right, up. One mauve one, one red one. Oh, gee, thanks very much. Just a minute. I've been diddled. What? This red one. It's got no marshmallow on it. Bruce. What? Piss off. <laughs> Now, new from KTEL, the magic all-in-one super handy helper Wonder Finger. A product of space research, the new KTEL Wonder Finger does everything. Tired of cleaning your ears? Throw away that old-fashioned fork. The KTEL Wonder Finger does it for you. A thousand and one uses around the home. It's a real winner. Stops leaks. Checks light socks. Stirs tea. <laughs> a must for every medicine chest, the KTEL Wonderfinger stops sneezes. <laughs> stops runny noses. <laughs> it's educational too. Teach your children to count up to one. <laughs> Buy two and talk to parking cops. <laughs> Win friends and influence people with the KTEL Wonderfinger. <laughs> It's the happening life of every party. <laughs> the KTEL Wonderfinger. It's a must. Order now and receive at no extra cost, absolutely free and for nothing, one brand new KTEL trouser leg. <laughs> Out now. Flesh coloured or natural green. Cassettes, $4.99. In Germany's peaceful little Rausen, Steinflinger, Volkswagen, Lederhosen, Wiener Schnitzel and Prawn cocktail valley, there lives an ancient order of silent nuns who, from the beginning of time, or yesterday week, whichever came first, have picked the grape and piously blended the wine that bears their humble name. And what is that name? Blue Nun. Blue Nun, surprisingly different wine. Today in Canberra, Mr. Tony Eggleton, the Prime Minister's press officer and keeper, declined to comment on suggestions that Malcolm Fraser is a latent human being. <laughs> it's ridiculous. He said. Rover's the best Prime Minister we ever had. <laughs> Sir William McMahon, speaking from a hole in the skirting board of his kitchen, <laughs> has announced a campaign to have all 90-pound weaklings banned from Bondi Beach. <laughs> I believe it's the only proper thing to do. He said, casually falling into Sonia's new K-Tel mouse twister. <laughs> they keep kicking sand in my face. <laughs> Following his successful prayer-a-thon for rain, the Premier of Queensland has issued another commandment. Well, if we can get rain, we can get lots of other things. <laughs> Such as? Two free tickets to Disney on ice. <laughs> a Lamborghini ute with a CB radio tuned to God. <laughs> a K-Tel fur-lined digital boomerang and con conservationist crutcher. <laughs> As recommended by the Leyland sisters and Harry Buttrose. <laughs> and finishing off his statement from the press room inside his athletic support, <laughs> Mr. Peterson announced he has changed the name of Brisbane. 
Henceforth, he said, it will be known as Joe Jerusalem. <laughs> Speaking at a press conference held on the front cover of the Woman's Weekly, <laughs> Mr. Kerry Packer said, Although my World Series cricket had a slow and uncertain beginning, I'm very proud to announce that it had grown into what can only be described as an unqualified dismal failure. <laughs> He went on to announce new plans for a revolutionary sudden death knockout series. The first of these will be a World Eleven versus Tony Gregg. <laughs> and the winner of that game will go on to play in the final match, Tony Gregg versus a lion park. <laughs> and now a word from the Labour Party. Back of the smokes. A word from the Liberal Party. Box of cigars. And finally the Country Party. 40 acres of marijuana. <laughs> Marijuana, why? Because smoking Herefords makes you dizzy. <laughs> This war. Yes, Dave. Did you hear me, Grace? Yes, Dave. You said, damn this war. I said, damn this war, Grace. Are you listening to me? <laughs> no, dear. <laughs> You're a good woman, Grace. Damn this war. Man's inhumanity to humanity. Why? Why do we do it? Why? Why do we fight each other? Why? <laughs> To get to the other side? <laughs> it's not a riddle, Grace. I'm sorry, Dave. Oh. It's this damn wall. <laughs> You're a good woman, Grace. Even if Maggie the barmaid has got bigger norks. <laughs> it's the war, Dave. Damn this war. Look how it's affected this whole family. Take... Take young John. <laughs> No sooner has war broken out, and what happens? His wife commits suicide by catching polio. And he becomes an alcoholic, communist, layabout doctor. And, and Medibank is still 30 years away. Please don't talk about it, Dave. I'd rather not talk about it, Grace. And then there's young Tom, over there, digging a trench for his king and country. Yes, if only he knew how hard it is for us. <laughs> Damn this war, Norm. I'm scared. Pull yourself together, Tom. <laughs> This war, Norm. Pull yourself together. What? Tom, pull, Damn, you, pull yourself sorry. together. Damn this war, Norm. I'm scared. The German army's nothing to be afraid of. There's the Italian army too, Norm. Yeah, but there's two of us, Tom. Norm! I've just trodden on something. Camels. No, it's not that. Bloody wogs, then. Curb those wogs, I always say. It's a mine, Norm. Well, of course it's yours. You found it? I'm standing on a mine, Norm. Right. Don't move. Be careful. Listen to everything I say. Now, give us your rifle. <laughs> Now, hand over your wallet. <laughs> Here. 
Don't move an inch. No. Oh, jeez, Norm. I don't know what I'd do without you. Well, you better think about it, mate. <laughs> we'll see ya. <laughs> Norm! Norm! No, Norm! Yes, Dave? I said, damn this war, Grace. Has Tom been shot yet? Not yet, Kitty. Grace? Yes, Dave. Grace, Grace. I'm sorry, Dave. It's this damn war. For what we are about to receive, may Hector Crawford be truly thankful. <laughs> I think it's just terrible the way this terrible war has such a terrible effect on all of us. Terribly. <laughs> yes, dear. First of all, your brother John. Now Tom fights for our freedom on the sands of North Africa. Even young Terry wants to become a fighter pilot. Yes, it touches us all. Even you, the young, the innocent. I can't imagine what terrible effects the terrible tentacles of war must have had upon you, Kitty. I'm pregnant. <laughs> Damn the Germans. <laughs> I didn't know Mr. Jarvis was a German. <laughs> no! Yeah, still here, Tom, mate. The mine won't go away, Norm. Yeah. They're funny like that. <laughs> nice pair of underpants you got there, Tom. Oh, no, Norm. Yes, Dave. I said, damn this war, Grace. Dave, the war has been over for seven years. Thank you, Grace. You're a good woman. When is Tom coming home, Mum? I don't know, Kitty. Perhaps in the next episode. Perhaps the one after that. Perhaps never. Ten years ago, John Chance read the following item on ABC News. Today, a woman was bitten on the funnel by a finger-web spider. <laughs> the ABC apologizes. This is obviously wrong. It should have read, Yesterday, a woman was bitten on the funnel by a finger-web spider. <laughs> However, the late Mimo Just Hand reveals this too is wrong, for which the ABC once more apologizes. It should have read, She was bitten on the web by a funnel-fingered spider. <laughs> no, she wasn't. She was fingered on the funnel by a bitten web. <laughs> No, she wasn't. She hit it with a brick. <laughs> it wasn't a spider, it was a budgie. Off they go. Every day, crisp and clean. You can't go with them to make sure they stay that way. But isn't it nice to know that with a little love and lots of fabulon, they'll stay crisp and clean all day while you're at home alone. Smiling at your collar. <laughs> Isn't that a nice feeling? Do you know why it's a nice feeling? Because in every way, Fabulon cares. Use lots. Are you a Fabulon mum? <laughs> Dear. Please. Please. All right. Thank you. I saw Mum yesterday. Uh. She's back on it again. Uh. She said she forgot to tell you the budgie fell in the blender. Uh. So would you mind fixing the blender? <laughs> and don't eat the banana cake. <laughs> Who's a pretty boy now? <laughs> Good day, Dad. Yeah. 
Have some banana cake. Jed, have some respect for the dead. But I'm alive. Your grandma's been at it with a blender again. Oh, not poor old Stumpy again. No, Twinkie Pops. Uh. Of course, I've had worse in me time. Again? Yes, again. Don't you again me again, boy. I've had quite enough of your smart againing. Oh, Dad. Don't dad me, boy. I'm your father. <laughs> Too. Keep out of this, though. <laughs> yes, I've had worse. When I was a prisoner in Colditz, all I had one week was half a mouse. Why? I was hungry. <laughs> My mum sent it to me in a Red Cross package. <laughs> but I was lucky. Donga Baker ended up eating his bunk. Why? He was hungry. <laughs> his mum only sent him socks. Dad, you don't expect me to believe. Listen, that... boy, while I was over there fighting and dying for you, and you were back here evading your patriotic duty by telling everybody you wet the bed. <laughs> he was only six months old. Keep out of this, Phil. You know where I was? Where? Tunneling through Poland. Me and Donga digging with a rubber band and a minty's wrapper. <laughs> They only got us when we hit the Adriatic. Oh, Poland's nowhere near the Adriatic. Well, it's not now. Hitler kept moving it around to confuse our bombers. <laughs> now, Ted. Keep out of this, though. Have another cup of tea, dear? Thanks. Thanks. 753 miles long, that tunnel was. Not including the last ten. Why? They were underwater. Me and Donga. We're heroes. Oh, Dad, look, yeah. Dad. Heroes we were, boy. We got three VCs each. What? Yeah. You got three VCs? That's right. Oh, where are they? They fell off. <laughs> Bullshit, Dad. You're a garbo at Pakapanyal in the war. <laughs> that was me cover. I was in intelligence. Now, where are you going? Go on the footy, Dad. I'm taking the car. The Kingswood? You're not taking the Kingswood? <laughs> I just put a new tennis ball in the tow bar. <laughs> Dad, besides, I will need the car, for today I am marching. And you know why? Because today is Anzac Day. Dad, I'm taking the car to the footy. And do you know why? Why? Because yesterday was Anzac Day. <laughs> <laughs> Is this you breaking eggs the old-fashioned, boring way? Yes. Is this you doing the washing up the old-fashioned, boring way? Yes. Stop. You need the new all-in-one household helper with a thousand and one uses. Yes. New from Majestic. It's the Majestic Miracle Module, the supreme household gadget. <laughs> the Majestic Miracle Module eliminates dishwashing. <laughs> Cuts egg breaking time in half. <laughs> Wake up the Majestic Miracle Module way. Daddy! <laughs> Stuffy? Air-condition your home with the Majestic Miracle Module. <laughs> Instantly removes unwanted household pests. Avon calling. <laughs> Converts easily to fashion jewellery others will talk about. The Majestic Miracle Module. Buy many and build your own home. Like what she done. Out now, $14.99 or cassettes $50. Available at these stores. Not and Kirby's, David James, Woolworths, Coles, Place Brothers, Waltons, Myers Stores, Edel's, Light and Sound, News Agents Everywhere, all hardware stores, meeting buyers, simply buy, Queen's discount, Packers stores, Rolling Rocks, Dustin. Aisha Buckrose, publisher, Australian Women's Weekly. Hello. This week's Woman's Weekly brings you a searching study of the secret torments of Prince Charles. Who will he choose as his partner for life? Lady Jane? Or a helicopter? <laughs> and speaking of helicopters, is the ancient string craft of macrame the key to peace and happiness? No. The Weekly says yes. <laughs> and the free eight-page lift-out tells you how to get naughty. <laughs> And speaking of fun, read 
how Mrs. Samantha Duck spent 21 years crothering a birthday cake for the Queen. <laughs> Nobody cares. And in this week's weekly competition, you get to cast your vote for Australia's sexiest girl. Is it Lang Hancock? <laughs> Kamal? Or <laughs> the right answer could win you a trip round the world. I know, because I'm a secret mystery judge and my decision's pretty final, and I won't enter into much correspondence. <laughs> the Australian Women's Weekly, out now, with a photo of Paul Newman on the cover. <laughs> to descriptions of play in the centenary test between Australia and the Um Siam Siam. <laughs> well, the Poms have won the toss and elected to bat, and at the crease now is their opening batsman, Tony Gregg, who, although he hasn't scored many runs this season, has sold more Kellogg's Nutrivate than you can <laughs> poke a stick at. <laughs> Gregg will face the first ball from Lily, Lily faster than ever this year. And Lily runs into bowl, he bowls, oh dear, it hit him in the groin. <laughs> well, that was a good ball. <laughs> Your comments, Richard? Well, oh, to be honest, Alan, I didn't see it. I was busy watching a seagull nod off on the scoreboard. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Now, Greg stands to face the second ball from Lily. Lily runs in, bowls, oh dear, it's hit him in the groin. <laughs> that delivery pitched well up, Richard. Yes, yes, just as I thought. He's woken up. Funny thing about seagulls, they've all got insomnia. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Back with the play now. Lily has the ball. Greg stands to face him. Ah, there's a funny thing, Alan. The seagull went back to sleep <laughs> and fell off the scoreboard. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Now Lily runs in, bowls, oh dear, it's hit him in the groin. <laughs> and the umpire has signalled a no ball. <laughs> Lily looks rather happy about that, because he gets to bowl that one again. <laughs> now Lily walks back to his birdie mark. Greg's up on one knee now. As Lily runs in a little faster this time, oh dear, it's hit him in the groin. <laughs> I see the umpire's had a haircut, Alan. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. I had one too. Good, Richard. Now, Greg's down on his knees, his face contorted abnormally. Could it be the sun in his eyes? It could be the sun in his eyes, Alan. It's not raining all that heavily. <laughs> Those seagulls could do with a haircut. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Now, Greg's still on his knees, his back to Lily, his bat thrown away. As Lily runs in, calls to Greg, Greg turns, oh dear, it's hit him in the groin. <laughs> well, what a shame, the umpire has signalled another no ball. Oh, Greg could do with a haircut too. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Now, Greg's on his knees yet again, tears streaming from his eyes, trying to say something to the umpire. Probably just agreeing about the no balls. <laughs> just a minute, he seems to be in some pain. Now, it's probably his feet, Alan. Being an umpire's not all beer and skittles, you know. <laughs> Hello, there's a seagull just wandered onto the pitch. The umpire walks up to it. Oh, dear, he's kicked it in the groin. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Now, Lily walks back to his birdie mark. Greg's still not quite steady on his feet, being supported by two Australian fieldsmen who appear to be beating him about the head in a friendly manner. <laughs> As Lily runs in, bowls, oh dear, it's hit him in the groin. Now, look, Alan, there's a bit of excitement up on the hill there. I see the seagulls are moving up to the pie stand. And yes, it is, the umpire's just signaled lunch. Thank you, Richard. And as Lily leads the Australians off the field to a well-earned lunch, it seems that Greg's not very hungry because he's decided to have a sleep on the wicket. <laughs> Okay, last one before breakfast. Cheesy, <laughs> <laughs> Eddie. He should have stopped. He's a bit slow. It was a good hit, Brian. Yeah, it would have gone for six if he hadn't stopped it. Come on, Mr. Greg. Stop fooling around. Come on, wake up. Come on, do the commercial. If you start the day with... Upside down. <laughs> <laughs> 
Jeez, he's dumb. He's told to every day have a big plate of Kellogg's nutri grain. No, grain! Grain. Anyhow, Kellogg's nutri grain is real beaut. No, beaut! Fancy yourself as former material, do you? No, not really. I use Ajax. I reckon Wayne would make a good foreman. Wayne's your husband, is he? Yeah, he's been on the dial since he left school. Every day he walks through the employment office and says, Hey, fellas, I'm former material. Pays to advertise. Yeah, they throw things at him. We've got a terrific collection of public service equipment at home. <laughs> Two packets of razzmatazz. Well, the, for my wife. Yeah? Uh-oh, razzmatazz. Triple dingle. Yes. she got really skinny legs, hasn't she? Who? Razzmatazz girl. Why well, reckon she got malnutrition of the legs? <laughs> One packet of Bex. Boo-oo-X. Boo-oo-X. Got a headache. No, I'm curing a ham. Huh? What's wrong with it? It's got a headache. <laughs> oh, well, that's all right then. Thank you. One tube of Colgate for fresh breath confidence. Ding. Bloody rude the way that bloke tells his girlfriend her breath stinks. <laughs> you uh, watch a lot of television, do you? Oh, no. Only when it's on. <laughs> Two rolls of sorbent. What's the gentlest tissue in the bath if you can issue? <laughs> Trivic jingle. Yes. Have to be a pretty brave bloke to write a jingle about dunny paper, but. <laughs> well, uh, what television programs do you like most? Oh, I don't like any of them much. One packet of Lipton two bags. You a jiggler or a dangler? <laughs> um. Yeah. You know, we jiggle in a cup, we dangle in a pot, we like to jiggle and dangle, but I do not. That's all. Um... Do you watch uh, Monday Conference or Four Corners? What are they? <laughs> They're current affairs programs on the ABC. What's that? You don't know the ABC? Only up to Q. <laughs> uh, I count pretty good, but <laughs> One bottle of comfort. Softness is a thing for comfort. I, uh, I suppose you watch programs like Kojak. Oh, no, a bit deep for me. <laughs> <laughs> Two packets of Rosella Savory Rice. Not Boone's again. No, no, no. Starsky and Hutch. No, no, no. Sesame Street. No, no, no. Rosella. Savory Royce. Give it jingle. Are there any are there any programs you do like? No, I usually make a cup of tea during the program breaks. <laughs> it must take you a long time. Yeah, the jug's broken. It takes about 14 cricket disposable lighters to boil a cup of water. <laughs> One cart and a Benson and Hedges. Oh, they didn't have a jingle, did they? No. Aren't they kind? <laughs> I was in an art art commercial once. Before they banned them, only I smoked Benson and Hedges. Stuart Wagstaff, you're a star, but the other fags by far. <laughs> <laughs> Medical authorities warn smoking is a health hazard. Terrific slogan. <laughs> yes. So you, you mean to say you watch television just for the commercials? Yeah, I think they're really terrific. One frozen apple pie. You and I and apple pie. Ooh, what's your sign? My sign? Yeah. Almost the same as Winston Churchill's. Oh, um, is that the lot? Yes, that's all. $7.20. Oh, I think I'll... Tell you what, but. What? But. Have you noticed they never put the best commercials on during the non-writing period? <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. Next. Anyone want to buy any Sanyo equipment? That's life! <laughs> Sanyo! Well, 
Welcome to Glitter Time, where we look behind the tinsel to the heartbeat of the gay world of the arts. My name is Peter Mascara. So my guest on today's show is culture maker and trend marketer, Mr. John Singleton. <laughs> Hello, consumers. <laughs> John, your company, Vulgar Incorporated, <laughs> has created some of the more hmm, startling television commercials. Could you explain this genre? Oh, just plain John will do, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I have got a Rolls Royce. No, 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 I mean your work. What is your philosophy? My basic philosophy, Peter, is that your average little run of the mill locker in the street is nothing but a cretinous little worm incapable of thinking for himself his only hobby is chundering on the cat. <laughs> good heavens, that is vulgar. Yeah, good, isn't it? <laughs> well, tell me, how do your techniques differ from other advertisers? Peter, for far too long, the people of this nation have been subjected to puffy-sounding announcers. John, whom do you mean? Ernie Sigley, Paul Hogan, Jeannie Little, Doug Anthony. Puffs all of them. Doug Anthony? Yeah, Mal Fraser's barrel girl. Well, tell me, how do your techniques differ? Peter, in none of my commercials will you perceive a Sheila running stark as slow motion through a forest. No. No, no, very pretty, but it's not real. I mean, they can't identify with it. The only thing that they understand is blokes shouting their lungs out, slopping soft drink down their chins, sitting in canoes, shouting, where do you get it? <laughs> and speaking so fast you can't understand a word they're saying. I would have thought people would reject that. Au contraire, Peter. Au contraire. That's French. I lap it up. Well, tell me, what of the future? What future productions can we look forward to coming out under the vulgar banner? Oh, we'll have the usual team of priests, nuns, footy players, prime ministers flogging used cars and old tyres. But nothing startlingly new. No, nah, not really. Oh, I suppose you could say the one with the Pope flogging reconditioned dishwashers will raise a few eyebrows. <laughs> the Pope? Oh, not the real Pope, good heavens, no, not the real Pope, couldn't afford him. <laughs> <laughs> we got a fella done up to look just like him, but of course to keep in line with trade practices, we've got this little sign saying simulated Pope. <laughs> Flashes up on the screen every few seconds, small letter and don't know why we bother, really, most Australians don't know what simulated means. <laughs> well, putting the simulated Pope to one side for a moment. What other famous names can we expect to see popping up in a future vulgar production? Oh, Peter, I don't want to preempt the official Buckingham Palace bulletin. <laughs> However, suffice it to say that there is a certain chain of discount tyre marts stocking up on big three radial recaps for the Jubilee celebrations. You mean you've got... That's right. Liz. The ultimate tyre lady. <laughs> the ultimate vulgar production. Can I? <laughs> Thank you, John Singleton, and good night from Glitter Time. Oh. Bonjour. Bonsoir. Et très bonne nuit. Et un grand hello à mon maman. Avec le Toulouse-Lautrec, Citroën et Peugeot, Charles de Gaulle, Pic. Qu'est-ce que c'est, le plume de matin terrible? Fermez la porte. Fermez la bouche, au vert. Le Champs-Élysées, Pigalle, Samio. Et mon cher, enchanté. Après le ski. Provençal, le Beaujolais, le Pic. Et très Versailles, le Digit. Renault. Et 
Rowan or mon maman. Following Sir John Kerr's resignation from his season as Governor General and acceptance of Mr. Fraser's lucrative offer of ambassador to UNESCO and a free packet of Smarties, <laughs> Sir John, or Cuddles as he's known to nobody, has announced he's resigning the UNESCO job for an even more lucrative offer from the Prime Minister. Mr. Fraser, or Giggles, as is known to his undertaker, <laughs> gave details of Sir John's new post today. I am proud to announce that Sir John Kerr, or Percy, as he's known to the porcelain, <laughs> has accepted a challenging new post. <laughs> I've made him Australia's first ambassador to Brisbane. <laughs> Sir John, or Hey You, as he's known to Rupert Murdoch, <laughs> will also receive the honorary title of the Lord Warden of the Six Ports. Seven martinis, eight tinnies, and a Melbourne cup of champagne. <laughs> Mr. Joe Bielke Peterson was unavailable for comment on Sir John's new appointment as he was visiting his northern weekend retreat, Queensland. <laughs> where he quietly celebrated his birthday, known to the world as Peanut Sunday, <laughs> by writing his Bible and replaying some of his favourite obscene phone calls. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Canberra, or to use the Leyland brothers' pronunciation, Melbourne, <laughs> the Prime Minister has announced drastic new security procedures at Parliament House. From now on, he said, spraying himself with his new KTL Tammy repellent. <laughs> Everyone entering the house must wear an identification card with their picture on it, except me, because Tammy left the lens cap off the camera. <laughs> and Mrs. Fraser, after unknotting her tongue, which was attached to her ear, with Malcolm's new KTL tongue clamp, <laughs> said, Don't worry, Malcolm, I've sent the lens cap off to Kodak to be developed. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike, and I'm Mal, and this is Greg the Combi Van. <laughs> Little joke there, Mal. Yes, it was, Mike. Well, where are we this week? We're beside Greg the Combi now. <laughs> but what is our location, Mike? Ah, I've given that question much thought now, and I have pinpointed our location as being just about here. <laughs> ah, yes. Australia. A sunburned land of contrasts. Contrasts, Mal? Sometimes it's daytime, sometimes it is night. Ah, a keen observation, Mal. But we must press on further down the road to adventure. Right, Mike. <laughs> Where does our first letter come from today, Mike? The letterbox, Mal. <laughs> Who does it come from? The postman, now. <laughs> no, Mike. Who wrote it? The author, now. <laughs> this particular letter comes from little Teddy Thomas, who writes, and very neatly too. <laughs> Two big ticks for you, Teddy. <laughs> tick, tick. <laughs> He writes, Dear Mr. Brothers, what does a boomerang look like? Mmm, 
That's a thoughtful question, Teddy, and one that had us stumped for a bit. Mal finally came up with the goods. Take it away, Mal. Thanks, Mike. As you can see, Teddy, the boomerang looks a lot like something that used to be straight. <laughs> Next letter. This one, Mal, comes from... Oh, it comes from little Teddy again. Struth! What a coincidence! <laughs> this time he writes, what does a Seabit River tribesman look like? Gosh, that's another tough one. Over to you, Mal. What does a Seabit River tribesman look like? <laughs> that is a tough one, Mike. Now, Teddy, read your Seapig River Bung uh, native uh, colour brother query. <clears throat> we were not able to go to Seapig River because our busy schedule would not allow it. And we couldn't find it. However, Mike's inventive brain has yet again saved the day. And we are now able to show you this exclusive film graphically depicting a lifelike facsimile of a Sepik River native. The man you should be concentrating on <laughs> is the one who is smiling and waving at us with the grey double-breasted suit and the bone in his nose. But let us tell them the real story behind this graphic re creation. Right, Mal. I know it's hard to believe, but that is not a real Sepik River native. That is, in fact, our next-door neighbour. <laughs> who assures us he goes very brown in summer. <laughs> Thanks a lot to a good neighbour, Luigi Del Zotto. <laughs> the lady entering the shot, wearing the lap lap and rolled black stockings, is Luigi's mother-in-law. <laughs> oh, for those queasy at stomach, do not worry. That is not a real human head impaled on Luigi's hoe. No, it's just a black velvet Aboriginal painting wrapped around a spud. <laughs> yes, goodbye to you too, Luigi. Our final letter today comes from... Who does it come from, Mal? Oh, it comes from little Teddy Thomas again. <laughs> Struth! It's been a day chocker with coincidences. <laughs> this time, little Teddy asks... Is it true that certain Italians have been known to stick a bone through their nose and dress up as Sepik River natives? Gosh, that is a tough one. It certainly is, Mike. So join us next week when we load up the combis and strike out across the Simpson Desert to Rome. <laughs> and hopefully the answer to your question. And remember, if you have any requests... Ask the Leland Brothers! <laughs>
future, all prisoners will be nailed down to stop them being stolen by visitors. <laughs> and any warder found taking a bribe will be made to pay tax on it. <laughs> Good night. <All right>. <laughs> Show is an RS production for the Seven Network.